Welcome back to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. Uh, we are discussing uh, here the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology and in this part uh, we are continuing the discussion on the CRISPR system in uh, bacteria. So, you already know about the uh, CRISPR-Cas system in detail by this time. Uh, let us remember that CRISPR is a DNA based physical archival system and it provides bacteria and archaea with RNA guided acquired immunity to invasive uh, DNAs and these invasive DNAs may come from various sources like uh, viruses etc. Now uh, there are two uh, few uh, important things about uh, these acquired immunity. So, there has to be some kind of acquisition of the uh, uh, enemy DNA which we already discussed in the earlier part. So, in this acquisition of the fast sequences or enemy sequences, there is stories information, stories of information about its encounter with the invading virus by storing a fragment of the DNA stolen from that virus itself uh, into the uh, CRISPR loci. And uh, in the uh, immunity against this reinfection phase, uh, uh, whenever in future some virus attack is going to happen, uh, in these later encounters, the bacteria would use this stored information once again in the physical form to counter the attack by the virus. This archive provides immunity to the bacteria against virus and is heritable and this is already discussed and known to you. Now, what are the key steps of CRISPR-Cas immunity? We were discussing about the Markov chain uh, model. Uh, in this regard. Now, let us uh, look in, in exactly what happens inside the uh, bacteria when it encounters a uh, virus or a mobile uh, genetic element of uh, pathogenic nature. So, the key steps are the adaptation stage, second step is the expression in the biogenesis stage and the th third is the interference stage. In the adaptation stage, there is the insertion of new species into the CRISPR loci and we have discussed how the Cas1, Cas2 and CSN2 uh, uh, in, 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 and along with Cas9 in the uh, CRISPR Cas9 Cas system uh, does that. Uh, and in the expression and biogenesis, the transcription of the CRISPR loci and processing of CRISPR RNA takes place and this is again dependent on the class and type. Uh, which we have discussed some uh, in, in certain types, cascade will be involved in certain other types, cascade will be in, involved and so on. Uh, in interference also there will be variability, we will discuss these uh, in future, but exactly what happens in interference is that the, the virus, the bacteria detects and degrades the mobile genetic elements by CRISPR RNA and Cas9 uh, in, in later uh, encounters. Uh, the adaptation uh, is the outcome of the earlier encounters and at that stage there is no any immunity and so there is no any interference. Uh, but as these uh, is being stored, information is being stored and the uh, uh, final state, uh, immune state of the bacteria is obtained, after that any, uh, any infection by that particular virus will be countered by these uh, defense system. So, inference happens at, at much uh, later uh, point. Now, uh, this is the simplified uh, Markov chain uh, uh, model uh, we have discussed in length earlier. Uh, now, if you look into these in a very simple uh, schematic way, you have these uh, foreign DNA here uh, which has invaded the uh, bacterial uh, cell and we know that uh, palm sequences are very important which are uh, for example, in uh, CRISPR Cas9 system, this does not represent all the uh, class and types. We are discussing the CRISPR Cas9 system here specifically. So, uh, this helps in the uh, uh, re uh, regulation, uh, recognition as well as the adaptation. So, here we know about the uh, bacterial genome uh, which has uh, these loci uh, and uh, of CRISPR Cas9 genes, okay. And then we also know that a tracer RNA is very very important and uh, due to uh, the adaptation or acquisition state process, uh, these one small fragment of the invading uh, viral DNA will be incorporated into the existing uh, CRISPR loci. 
Now, uh, let us focus a little bit on this uh, uh, tracer RNA. So, this tracer RNA is being uh, transcribed here as you can see and also the primary uh, transcript or uh, pre CRISPR RNA is uh, transcribed. Now, uh, these tracer RNA has some complementarity uh, with these uh, repeat uh, sequences and so uh, all the, these tracer RNA will uh, form uh, complexes or uh, you can see here many of these small small tracer RNAs are forming complexes with the primary transcript. Now, there is some kind of uh, processing at this stage uh, which uh, cleaves these uh, primary transcripts uh, which are uh, complexed with the tracer RNA uh, into single uh, partners and forms the matured uh, CRISPR RNA. And this CRISPR RNA goes and uh, uh, in, in, the, in the next generation or next round when this same virus attacks the uh, bacteria, the spacer molecule or the DNA which was originally stolen from these virus and stored into the CRISPR RNA forms complementarity due to the complementarity will uh, form this uh, assembly here and in the presence uh, here the cas9 is also a playing role and these will lead to the cleavage of these uh, viral dna and thereby in the final stage the bacterium would be able to uh, uh, kill the virus or annihilate the virus. So, this is exactly what happens at the molecular level, but there are many uh, uh, very different uh, proteins and uh, various factors involved in each of these stages. We will be trying to discuss what are those uh, proteins in uh, details. So, now we know the function of the uh, type 2 CRISPR Cas system uh, is uh, there in adaptive nucleic acid restriction or, or the virus annihilation by cleaving its uh, DNA. And then we know about this role of Cas1, Cas2 which is conserved in all types of class uh, and, and, and types of uh, the CRISPR-Cas uh, system and foreign DNA is recognized by these two. Let us discuss in detail about the adaptation uh, stage. So, this is the initial phase or tau1, a distinct sequence of the invading mobile genetic elements. Uh, which may be viruses, transposable elements and conjugative plasmids uh, and these distinct uh, DNA sequence we call as a protospacer is incorporated into a CRISPR array yielding a, a new spacer. This process uh, empowers the host organism to memorize the intruder's genetic material and displays the adaptive nature of this immune system. Cas1, Cas2 nucleases are found uh, ubiquitously, uh, we know about that. And in the spacer integration process, the Cas1 and Cas2 forms a complex that promotes the integration of the new spacers uh, in a manner which is similar to that of viral integrases and transposases. And we have discussed a lot about these integrases uh, in, in uh, the uh, preliminary classes. The catalytically active uh, site of Cas2 uh, is dispensable for spacer acquisition. A new spacer is usually incorporated at the leader repeat boundary of the CRISPR array while the first repeat of the array is uh, uh, duplicated. There are variations uh, in the requirements and targets of the adaptation machinery. Uh, Cas1 and Cas2 although is sufficient to promote spacer acquisition in most uh, studied types of uh, type 1 CRISPR systems. Uh, type 1B requires Cas4 uh, for adaptation. Type 1F CRISPR-Cas system of uh, Pseudomonas erysonosa additionally requires the interference machinery to promote the uptake of uh, new uh, spacers. Similarly, type 2A systems require CSN2, Cas9 and tracer RNA which we have discussed uh, for acquisition. The type 3B Cas1 proteins uh, unique adaptation uh, mode, uh, it is fused to a reverse transcriptase and involved in acquisition from both DNA and uh, RNA. 
The selection of a target sequence that is integrated into the CRISPR locus is not random, but it is distinct. Uh, we know that uh, uh, a short sequence called the protospacer adjacent motif PAM, which is located directly next to the protospacer, is crucial for acquisition in reference in type 1, 2, and uh, 5 CRISPR Cas uh, systems. In type 2 A CRISPR Cas systems, the PAM recognition domain of Cas9 is responsible for this. Uh, protospacer selection and it was uh, speculated for long that after uh, protospacer selection Cas9 recruits these Cas1, 2 and possibly CSN2 for integration for the new spacer into the uh, CRISPR array. Now, there are two kind of uh, spacer acquisition uh, processes. One is the naive spacer acquisition, the other one is the primed spacer acquisition. Uh, in naive spacer acquisition, the CRISPR collects the spaces from an invader it has not yet encountered. This is some kind of a uh, debut uh, encounter or first time uh, a virus uh, attacks a uh, bacteria or a bacteria uh, is exposed to a first time uh, attack of a particular strain of a, a virus. While prime spacer acquisition uh, is uh, happen uh, it happens when uh, a virus encounters uh, bacteria encounters a virus which has already attacked it in the past but due to some reasons the memory may have been lost uh, in in certain cases so if the spacer do not completely matches the targeted protospacer either due to spatial degeneration the spacer had got degenerated or protospacer uh, protospacer uh, mutation uh, the crispr may engage in primed acquisition so although the uh, antecedent uh, DNA would have would, would is there uh, due to the uh, earlier attacks. Some change in this uh, uh, antecedent uh, DNA has taken place or it may have uh, got totally lost. So, uh, this is not naive in a way, this is called primed uh, spacer acquisitions. So, here it collects new spaces from the invader, uh, it may have been immune to in the a previous generation. For this type of adaptation situation, Cas3 has been shown to be uh, very, very important. So, you can see here the CRISPR adaptation DNA capture uh, at blocked or broken invader DNA replication. So, you have the primed spacer acquisition on the one side and the naive spacer acquisition on the other side. We will be discussing these at length. Just uh, for uh, a quick uh, uh, look into these, you have cascade R root complex here and you have an invader replisome here and certain players like reg g pri a involved here. And then uh, here you have uh, again the cas1 cas2 system and you have reg b c d involved here and all of both these uh, pathways uh, would uh, lead to uh, you know the DNA integration over here. And then uh, you have involvement of DNA polymerases. And, and so on. Now, let us discuss in detail exactly what is naive and primed uh, spacer acquisition. It is suggested that DNA capture requires uh, invader DNA replication forks uh, that are compromised according to the presence or absence of cascade. In primed adaptation, uh, these cascade R loop complexes block advancing invader uh, DNA replication fork. So, it will be blocked over here. Reg G and Pry A identifies as blockages. This blockage will be identified by these reg G Pry A. And Pry A binding to the fork 3 prime end limits fork remodeling activities until removed by reg G helicase activity that remodels fork and removes the R loops. Cas1 is presented with an invader fork substrate for nicking and DNA capture. This could collapse the invader DNA cap replication fork. Subsequent uh, nucleolytic processing of DNA possibly by Cas1 cutting a fork more than once or by actions of Cas3 may be required to liberate DNA for the uh, capture step. In uh, naive adaptation, uh, forks that are collapsed by Cas1 uh, nicking or by lesions or collisions are processed by REC BCD resulting in an invader DNA which is ready for uh, capture. Here uh, in C you can see the uh, DNA polymer is one uh, or represented by simply uh, poly. This is required for both naive and primed adaptation. So, the pathway is actually uh, primed and naive merges uh, from this uh, point onwards. So, pol A is required for 
both the processes. Pauli could act during a uh, new spacer integration uh, here you can see in S1 prime. Uh, integration leaves DNA repeat gaps uh, R1 and uh, R2 flanking the new spacer. So, here uh, uh, S1 as S1 prime uh, requiring synthesis of new DNA yielding uh, one new uh, repeat. A poly can fill uh, the single stranded DNA gaps uh, which is an activity uh, that may aid uh, DNA capture by generating duplex DNA after processing or invader DNA into a, a single stranded uh, DNA regions. Let us now go into the uh, middle phase or the tau 2 phase where biogenesis or expression uh, occurs. Uh, in this phase, uh, immunity is initiated with the transcription of the CRISPR array into a long precursor uh, CRISPR RNA, uh, pre uh, CRRNA, that is further processed into mature guide CRISPR RNAs containing the memorized sequences of invaders. In type 1 and 3 systems, members of the Cas6 family uh, perform the processing step yielding immediate species of CRRNAs that are flanked by a short 50 tag. One exception is that by the type 1 C system uh, which do not code for Cas6 proteins. Here the protein Cas5D processes pre CRISPR RNA resulting in Im intermediate uh, CRISPR RNAs with an 11 nucleotide uh, 5 prime tag. Further trimming of the 3 prime end of the intermediate CRISPR RNA by an unknown nucleus can occur and yields mature CRRNA species composed of a full spacer portion and a repeat portion which usually displays a hairpin structure in most uh, type 1 systems. In type 2 CRISPR system, correct processing of pre CRISPR RNA requires a transcoded small RNA endogenous ribonuclease 3 and cast iron protein. The tracer RNA serves as a guide for ribonuclease 3 aided processing of pre CRISPR RNA. Castine only stabilizes the pre CRISPR RNA tracer RNA interaction and has no catalytic function in RNA uh, processing. So, uh, to restrict the foreign DNA, the CRISPR array is transcribed as a uh, single transcript, which we have already discussed, and matured into small. Uh, targeting uh, CRRNAs in a process which requires RNAs 3 as well as uh, tracer RNA. The double stranded RNA uh, complex of CRRNA and TCR, TCR tra uh, tracer RNA is associated with the Cas9 and the spacer sequence within the uh, CRISPR RNA can hybridize to complementary DNA sequences. Castine then mediates cleavage of the targeted DNA downstream of the protospacer adjacent motif or palm which is highlighted by the uh, red uh, circle. The maturation of CRISPR RNA class 2 CRISPR Cas system is uh, different. Uh, tracer RNA is required in uh, type 2 systems for the processing of the pre CRISPR RNA. The anti repeat sequence of this RNA enables the formation of an RNA duplex with each of the repeats of the pre CRISPR RNA which is stabilized by Cas9. The duplex is then recognized and processed by the host RNAs 3 uh, endonuclease yielding an intermediate form of CRISPR RNA that undergoes further maturation by a still unknown mechanism to lead to the uh, mature small guide RNA. And uh, RNAs 3 independent mechanism in the CRISPR in the type 2 CRISPR system uh, also exist. Here the promoter sequence lie within each repeat and some initiate transcription leading to the intermediate uh, CRISPR RNA species. Let us discuss the role of RNAs 3. The RNAs 3 are magnesium ion dependent double stranded RNA specific endonucleases that are characterized by a 9 residue signature motif in their specialized endonuclease domain called the RNAs3 domain. In CRISPR Cas9, the bacterial RNAs3 protein is required to release the guide RNAs. RNAs3 levels vary with cell growth and environmental conditions 
and acts as a limiting factor in CRISPR-Cas9 mediated response to viral infections. Maturation of the CRISPR RNAs is dependent on trans-activating RNA which is partially complementary to the repeat sequences in the pre-CRISPR RNA resulting in tracer RNA CRRNA duplex uh, formation as shown in the figure. The tracer RNA CRRNA duplexes are bound and stabilized by the Cas9 protein. Host RNAs 3 then cleave pre-CRISPR RNA in the units containing single spacer sequences. Further trimming of the CRISPR RNA is performed by unknown uh, endonuclease as we have uh, shown here uh, and also discussed in the uh, earlier slide. The complex of Cas9 and single guide RNA will scan DNA until it finds a PAM sequence. The DNA strand is then unwound allowing as RNA for complementary verification. A successful recognition will result in the cleavage of both uh, DNA strands. So, for further details uh, in this RNA tree, genetic structure and function, uh, you may uh, refer to this uh, paper in end review of uh, genetics. Let us now look into the events that occur at the third phase or the final phase or the tau tree stage uh, interference. Here the mature CRISPR RNAs are used as guides to specifically interfere with the invading nucleic acids. Class 1 uh, system employs cascade uh, like complexes to achieve target degradation while in class 2 systems a single effector protein is sufficient for target interference. To avoid uh, self-targeting type 1, 2 and 5 systems specifically recognize the pump, pump sequence that is located upstream uh, in type 1 and 5 or downstream in type 2 of the protospacer. In type 3 systems, the discrimination between self and non-self is achieved via the 50 tag of the mature CRRNA, CRISPR RNA, which must not base pair with the target to enable degradation by the complex. In type 1 systems, uh, cascade uh, localizes invading DNA in a CRISPR RNA dependent manner and further recruits the nucleus Cas3 for target degradation. Cas3 induces a nick on the foreign DNA and subsequently degrades the uh, target DNA. In type 2 Cas system as you can see in this uh, picture, the tracer RNA CRNA duplex guides the effector protein Cas9 to introduce a double stranded break in the target DNA. The interference machinery of uh, type 3 systems comprise Cas10 CSM, uh, type 3 A and 3 D and Cas10 uh, CMR complexes which are able to target both DNA and RNA integrally. It has been shown that the interference of type 3 and in type 3 B systems depends on the transcription of the uh, target DNA. Uh, this is a type 3 system which comprises uh, Cas10 CSM and Cas10 uh, CMR. Uh, complexes which are able to target both uh, DNA and uh, RNA. The interference machinery of type 3 A and type 3 B system depends on the transcription of the target uh, DNA. The, the CRISPR cas systems must uh, distinguish uh, between self and foreign DNA to avoid uh, self targeting. The characteristic that warrant intruder cleavages are presence of PAM, a DNA motif flanking the RNA DNA complementary region uh, in types 1, 2 and 5, uh, absence of RNA complementarity between the 5 prime tag of CRISPR RNA and 3 prime flank of the target RNA in type 3 and presence of a uh, protospacer flanking sequence PFS and RNA motif in the target RNA uh, in type uh, 6. For uh, CRISPR-Cas uh, systems that utilizes a protospacer associated motif PAM, this PAM sequence defines the orientation of the new spacer during integration and generally Cas1, Cas2 oriented the 5 prime G as the first uh, nucleotide. The type 2 CRISPR-Cas9 system is the most widely used in the field of genome editing and has three main uh, components uh, as we now know a CRISPR RNA. Uh, an endonuclease named Cas9 and a trans-activating uh, CRNA. 
The engineered CRISPR-Cas system used for genome editing consists of two components. The Cas9 protein which can cleave the DNA and the guide RNA that distinguishes the sequence of DNA to be rectified. To apply CRISPR-Cas9 sequence or of the intended target genome uh, uh, first targeted uh, identified then the guide RNA is tailored to recognize a particular stretch of the base sequence uh, in the DNA. The guide RNA is affiliated to the DNA cutting enzyme uh, Cas9 and then this complex is presented to the target cells. The Cas9 locates the target letter and cuts the DNA at that point allowing alteration of the existing genome by either modifying or adding to the uh, sequence. Now, look into this uh, uh, figure a uh, little bit uh, closely. Uh, it was found that about uh, 100 uh, nucleotide long single guide RNA composed of CRISPR RNA and tracer RNA fragments linked with a tetra loop can be used instead of a native hybrid uh, gRNA. So, this is a synthetic uh, construct. So, we, we can use this uh, for uh, the CRISPR Cas9 based uh, genome editing. So, this is the components of the CRISPR Cas9 system. Uh, you can see here uh, Streptococcus pyrazines uh, Cas9, uh, this uh, uh, big bubble. It is formed being a complex with chimeric single guide RNA, which we just discussed earlier. Uh, comprising a spacer that hybridizes with the genomic target site here, this is the spacer and a scaffold RNA termed uh, uh, tracer RNA required for complex formation. The protospacer adjacent motif is required for sequence specificity of the streptococcus pyro, uh, Cas9, pyro, uh, Cas9 uh, mediated endonuclease activity against uh, genomic uh, DNA. The CRISPR-Cas9 uh, system of uh, these streptococcus pyrogenes is the simplest and most extensively used uh, CRISPR-Cas9 technology and this is based on the uh, guide RNA containing a specific 20 base pair sequence to guide the DNA endonuclease Cas9 to a complementary target DNA sequence in the genome where it induces a uh, double strand break as you can see uh, here and then once the double strand break happens uh, the uh, path may go towards the NHEZ or towards the homology uh, directed repair and we have discussed about these uh, two uh, pathways uh, in detail in the earlier uh, lectures. The 20 base pair target genomic DNA must be upstream of a specific sequence uh, 5 prime NGG. Uh, where N represents a random nucleotide. The castine induced DSB occurs about 3 base pair upstream of the 5 prime NGG and can in theory be induced in any 20 base pair genomic DNA flanking uh, sequences. Uh, the castine induced DSB will then be repaired by either the homology directed repair which can occur with the presence of a DNA repair template or by the non homologous uh, end joining uh, method. The error prone uh, non homologous end joining creates insertions and deletions in DELs around the DSB point here, especially when occurring in early coding exons and can cause loss of gene function or gene knockout by causing a framework shift that can lead to formation of a uh, premature uh, stop codon. CRISPR Cas9 system can be used to insert sequences or correct disease. Uh, causing mutations in a very accurate way. Uh, HDR uses a template sequence for very precise repair of the DSB. Exogenous DNA repair templates uh, with the required sequences placed between homology arms can be provided to the cells together with other components of the CRISPR Cas9 system to create specific indels or modifications at the uh, target genomic loci. We will be discussing about the applications of CRISPR Cas9 technology uh, in, the, in the next lecture in detail. So, with this, we come to an end of today's lecture. Uh, thank you for your patient hearing. Mm -hmm.